When this plane flies, the only emission that comes out of its tailpipe is the same thing that's in this glass. Water. It's because this plane is powered by a hydrogen fuel cell. Now, I'll go into how this works in a second, but what's important is that some in the aviation industry believe that this technology, hydrogen as a fuel, could hold the key to decarbonizing flight. What we need to do is eliminate the climate impact of flying. Hydrogen looks like it can allow us to do that. But the physics and economics around hydrogen mean that the odds of your future flight being hydrogen powered is very dependent on how far you plan on flying. So is hydrogen flight here? Is it in the future or is it already too late? Before we get into how planes like this work, it's important to consider why the aviation industry is thinking about hydrogen at all. In 2021, aviation was responsible for over 2% of global energy-related CO2 emissions, with flights pumping out a little over 720 megatons of CO2 into the atmosphere. And before the pandemic, that was even higher, at over 1,000 megatons. Even though engines are getting more fuel efficient, as global travel continues to recover, aviation emissions are growing. So in order to hit targets laid out in the Paris Climate Accords, various aviation groups such as IATA, the International Air Transport Association, have set the industry an ambitious target. Net zero emissions by 2050. While alternative fuels like sustainable aviation fuel, or SAF, could provide a pathway to net zero as the fuel still emits CO2, hydrogen could provide a route to absolutely zero emissions. So how does it work? One method is to use hydrogen combustion, where the hydrogen replaces jet fuel and is ignited to drive the propellers. Now, hydrogen is highly flammable, so while that means you get a lot of bang for your buck, almost three times that of jet fuel by weight, it also means that its use in aviation history has been somewhat checkered. So the other less fiery way to use hydrogen in planes like this is with a hydrogen fuel cell. Much like a battery, hydrogen fuel cells work by creating a flow of electrons around a circuit. Hydrogen is fed into one side of a cell, the anode, and oxygen into the other, the cathode, with a membrane sat between the two. At the anode, the hydrogen flows over a catalyst which separates the protons and electrons. Now, the hydrogen protons are able to pass through the membrane to reach the oxygen, but the electrons can't. Instead, they have to make their way around a circuit, and by doing so, power a motor, until they can reunite with the hydrogen protons and the oxygen to form H2O, or water. Which, along with heat, is the only emission that comes from this whole process. And it's that exact principle that's happening in this plane behind me. This is Zero Avia's test plane, a 19-seat aircraft which had its debut hydrogen-powered flight earlier this year. I caught up with Zero Avia's CEO at Paris Air Show. Today we have four out of top 10 airlines as our customers. Oh, Already nice. people reserve production slots because they want to be the first. Right now, it's only this left-hand engine that's hydrogen powered, but once the company completes testing, it has plans to develop engines to be able to carry 19 passengers around 300 nautical miles by 2025. Two other small startups pursuing hydrogen flight are US-based Universal Hydrogen, who have flown a similar plane to Zero Avia, and German-based H2 Fly. We started in 2006 to develop this kind of technology. At the moment, we are in the seventh uh, generation of powertrain, and I think the technology is today here. But it's not just small startups or small aircraft. One major plane manufacturer has thrown its weight behind hydrogen in a big way. Airbus. We're hoping to introduce a hydrogen powered aircraft in 2035. Zero CO2, so we're not just talking about net zero, we're talking about absolute zero. Airbus has plans for three different commercial hydrogen planes. A turbofan, a propeller powered plane and a longer range and further into the future blended wing design. Our view is that 2035 is not soon enough and we've got an urgency to be bringing these technologies to market. But while Airbus may be backing hydrogen, Boeing, on the other hand, appears less certain about its role in powering aircraft. We've learned a lot with hydrogen. We've flown six different forms of airplanes on hydrogen. We just think that its impact on airplanes, airports, and pipelines is greater, and therefore it won't help us as soon as some of these other solutions that are less impactful. And if the goal is 2050, we've got to work on the things that will help us the fastest. So why is that? Well, while hydrogen might be one of the most abundant elements in the universe, on Earth it's almost always attached to something else, like oxygen to form water. 
To isolate it requires using an electrolyzer, which is the reverse of a fuel cell, and that requires energy. Now, in order for hydrogen fuel to be considered carbon neutral, known as green hydrogen, the energy source that you use in that electrolyzer also has to be renewable, like solar. And right now, green hydrogen is expensive and kind of hard to come by. The different decarbonized energies that we're looking at are more expensive than kerosene is today. So there's going to be an increase in price and cost of the airlines, and that's likely to have an impact on ticket prices. Then there's the infrastructure around delivering it. While hydrogen electrolyzers can be set up pretty much anywhere, the amount needed to power aviation around the globe would require investment, potentially more than other sustainable fuels that can be piped into airports using the same infrastructure as jet fuel. We expect that in Europe we will have 10 to 12 billion of euros investment just to replace the kerosene infrastructure with hydrogen. And then there's the plane itself. While hydrogen may be lighter than jet fuel, it's actually less energy dense and takes up more space than the equivalent amount of jet fuel. That's why the windows on Airbus's render of their hydrogen aircraft stop here, because all of this would be used as a fuel tank. Obviously, less seats means less passengers, which potentially means less revenue. What's more, even with all that space, right now it's still only enough hydrogen to do short flights, meaning that transoceanic routes aren't currently possible on hydrogen, unless it's a small ocean. To really unleash the power of hydrogen, to really have a huge benefit, even to go long range with hydrogen, we have to rethink the way we fly, we have to rethink the shape of the planes. And therein lies the problem. When it comes to larger planes, it could already be too late for hydrogen to take off. The planes that are on sale today by the likes of Boeing and Airbus have a backlog of roughly six years, depending on the plane. Those planes are then in service for an average of around 20 years. That means that the planes that are being sold today are the planes that we'll be using in 2050. And looking round, none of them are hydrogen compatible. So hydrogen in its raw form isn't compatible with those existing aircraft. And that's why sustainable aviation fuel is really important. There's also a chance that it could stay that way. See, that target set by IATA and others was for net zero by 2050, not absolute zero. And if airlines achieve their net zero aims using SAF, there's questions around whether they would then choose to invest millions into renewing their entire fleet to be hydrogen planes when they've technically already hit their environmental targets. All this means that while you may see a greater number of hydrogen planes in the skies over the next few years, unless you're taking a relatively short trip, you could be waiting a long time before you step foot aboard a hydrogen plane.